Section 3.6 titled Solving Linear Systems in Three Variables. What we're going to look at in this section is how do we solve um, essentially just larger systems of equations. We're going to look at three by three systems. Systems that have three equations and three variables. Okay, here's a pretty standard looking problem to try and solve. We have three equations and you see that each equation has three variables, an x, a y, and we've introduced a z. So we need to try and solve this system, which means we want to find the numerical value for x, y, and z that satisfies all three equations. First thing I like to do, um, just to help organize my work, you can do this if you like it, but you don't need to. It also helps me as your instructor to grade and check your work for when you possibly make errors. I'm going to number my equations. So I know which ones I'm working with all the time. So equation one, two, and three. Now the first thing to do is try to, using elimination method, eliminate some variables. Okay. Um, I'm going to use equations, um, let's see, I'm going to use equations one and two. Let's just do it right here. One and two. I'm going to try and cancel the z's because they look like they can cancel pretty easy if I just change this one here. So I'm going to take equation one and I'm not going to change it at all. And I'm going to take equation two I'm going to take it times three. So here I am trying to keep myself organized and I'm showing myself exactly what I'm doing. So if I need to go back and check later, it'll be easy to do that. So equation two times three makes six X minus nine Y plus three Z equals negative 48. So now I'm going to add these two equations together. Uh, the z's are canceling by design. They're supposed to. I get 11x minus 11y equals negative 55. Um, now this doesn't always happen, but notice that this equation contains all numbers that are divisible by 11. I'm going to go ahead and divide them all by 11. x minus y equals negative 5. I'm going to label that as equation 4 and I'm going to save it and I'm going to come back to it later. Okay. Next I'm going to go back to the original problem and since I've canceled out z's already once, what I'm going to aim to do is cancel out z's again. But I can't pick the same two equations I just did. I have to pick either equations 2 and 3 or I have to pick 1 and 3. And you can pick whichever ones, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pick the ones I think look easier. I'm going to take equation 2 and 3. I'm going to take equation 3 as it is. I'm going to take equation 2 times 2. So that gives 4x minus 6y plus 2z equals negative 32. I'm going to add these together. Notice again by design the z's cancel out as they're supposed to. We get 7x minus 2y equals negative 25. Call this equation 5. At this point in the game, I'm ready to work with equations 4 and 5. Okay, so let's pull equation 4 and 5. And what I'd like to do is set them up so that something eliminates. Equation 4 is the smaller coefficients. Um, if I multiply this one, or if I make this one a positive 2, it will cancel with this one's negative 2. So I'm going to have to multiply equation 4 times negative 2, giving me negative 2x plus 2y equals 10. I'm going to just take equation 5 as it is. Okay, so by design, 
So y is now eliminate so that we have 5x equals negative 15. Divide by 5, we get x equals negative 3. All right. Now, we are not finished yet. We have the x, but we don't have the y and the z. So now we have to find the y and the z. Um, I'm going to come with the x value. Maybe right here to find the y. So if I put negative 3 here, um, that would be negative y equals negative 2. So y equals 2. Okay, so now I have the x, I have the y, now I need the z. So to find the z, let's see, I think that I will work with this equation. And let's see if I can just fit it in down on the bottom. Okay, so I've got uh, 2 times the x. I'm going to just do a little work as I go here just because I'm running out of space. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and multiply. 2 times the negative 3 makes negative 6. The y was 2, so negative 3 times 2 makes another negative 6. Plus z equals negative 16. So that's negative 12 plus z equals negative 16. So z equals negative 4. Okay, so I have my x, I have my y, I have my z. I'm going to write my answer as an ordered triple. Negative 3, 2, negative 4. There's my final answer. As you can see, just to kind of recap the steps, first thing I did is I, I tried to come up with an equations 4 and 5 right here that have two variables and specifically the same two variables. Okay? Then I use those equations 4 and 5 that have these two variables and I eliminate down to one variable. Once I get one variable then I start substituting my way backwards through the problem so I can get all three variables solved for. Okay, next example I'm again going to begin by numbering the equations. At this point you and you alone need to decide which variable do you want to cancel out. Do you want to try and cancel the x's, the y's, or the z's? I personally like having coefficients of 1's and as many of them as I can find because they're going to cancel a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the z's yet again, just like in the last problem. So I'm going to begin with equations 2 and 3. I'm going to take equation 2 times negative 1. So negative 2x minus 3y minus z equals negative 1. And I'm going to keep the bottom equation, negative 3x minus 4y plus z equals 4. And so what happens is these z's cancel out and we end up with negative 5x minus 7y equals 3. So there's my fourth equation. Okay, well now I'm going to do it again. This time let's pick 1 and 2. Here's equation 1, equation 2. Equation 2 times a negative 2 should cancel the z. So negative x um, plus y plus 2z equals 7. And down here I'm going to have negative 4x minus 6y minus 2z equals negative 2. Those z's cancel. So we have negative 5x minus 5y equals 5. There's equation number 5. All right, well now I'm going to bring equations 4 and 5 together. Notice how similar they all are already in respect to the x's. If I take equation 4 times negative 1 to make that negative 5x a positive 5x, 
I just bring this one up as it is. Notice that my x's are going to cancel out. Positive 5 and the negative 5x cancel. So we're left with 2y equals 2, so y equals 1. Okay. Well, from here, we need to start substituting back to find the rest of the solutions. Um, let's put the 1 right here for y, so negative 5x minus 5 times 1 equals 5. That's a negative 5x minus 5 equals 5. I'm going to add that over. So negative 5x equals 10. So x equals negative 2. Okay. And I need to find the z. And so to find the z, why don't I take this equation? So I'm going to have 2 times the x plus 3 times the y plus c equals 1. So that's <clears throat> negative 4 plus 3 plus z equals 1. That's negative 1 plus z equals 1. So z equals 2. All right, we have it. The solution is negative 2, 1, 2. That's x, y, z. All right, this last example, I begin the same way as the other problems is, uh, and then I label my equations. Equation 1, equation 2. When I look at equation 3, however, I notice that all the numbers here are divisible by 3. And I think my work's going to be a little bit easier if I'm looking at smaller numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and make this my equation 3. Okay. Well, it looks like the y's are set up real nice to cancel. In fact, if I just take... Um, if I take equations 1 and 3... Let's see, 3x minus y plus 2z equals 4, and negative 3x plus y minus 2z is negative 4. Well, look what happens. Cancel, 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 cancel. 0 equals 0. That means we have infinitely many solutions. And done.